Why do we suffer? Why do we struggle? Why do we worry? There is a dialogue between Allah and the shaitan. Allah cursed him. And shaitan responded, I'm going to do the following. What are the following? I'm going to make sure they, us, will go astray. I'm going to keep them living in hopes, false hopes. They're going to change the way they look. And they will change the creation of Allah. Subhanallah. We need to learn how to talk to him. Ya Allah, you put me through this test, pleasure, comfort, blessing. What do you want from me? We are living here for what? To please people? To please ourselves? Or to please Allah? What would you say to your 18-year-old self if you had a chance? Living in the West, how do you see the future of Islam? Are you hopeful for the future of Islam? Never lose hope. Allah made a promise. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Sheikha Haifa Yunis. Thank you for accepting our invitation. We are honored to have you with us. Jazakumullah khair for the invitation. Yeah, yeah, it's our pleasure. Can you tell briefly about your background? I was born in Iraq, so your neighbors. I grew up in a family, may Allah bless my parents, both of them passed away which focuses on education. I always loved to read. And then a couple of things happened where I started reading more, connecting more, and he showed me that there is no pleasure and happiness except when you are connected with him. Throughout all this journey, subhanAllah. How can a Muslim woman, or Muslims in general, increase their love for the Quran, have their relationship with the Quran? The first thing is give yourself a credit that you want that. Two, Allah will give it to you, for sure. Three, be patient. It takes a long time, a long time. Next, you need to have time with his words. We live in a time and age where seven seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds reels is the longest. And we wanna learn everything, right? Why TikTok and, and the reels and all becoming very popular because of that speed and the pace of where we are living, not with his words. No. You give him 10 seconds, he will give you 20 seconds. You give him an hour, he will give you a day. I need to give more of me, of my time. And the more you learn this, he starts opening doors for you. Consistency is extremely important. The relationship, any human being, if you call them once a year, you have no relationship. Only in Ramadan. What do you think about the psychological effect of surrendering to Allah, having tawakkul in Allah? Nothing whatsoever in this life will give you peace, happiness, like surrendering to Allah. Why do we suffer? Why do we struggle? Why do we worry? Why do we get anxious? Because we think we can do it. We planned it. It will happen. Where is, inshallah, the real, inshallah, where is Allah wins? So when I plan beautifully, and we all should plan, these are means, but didn't happen. I get anxious, I get worried, I get depressed, I get upset, anger, it depends me, who I am. We need to learn how to talk to him. Ya Allah, you put me through this test, pleasure, comfort, blessing. What do you want from me? You go and sit. Don't you ever think the people who are in front of you are those who's going to give you the job. It's Allah. Those are means. So you're going to talk to him and says, Ya Allah, you know how much I want this job. But I have full confidence in you. If it is good for me, you will give it to me. Wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. If you do that sincerely, I can't tell you. You leave and then they, you receive the email says, or they didn't answer you, which means they didn't choose you. What comes out of your mouth? Naturally, spontaneously. Allah decreed, and what Allah decreed will happen. Because you said this to him. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. We saw that 80% of our audience, including this video, are not subscribed to our channel. As you know, we are a non-profit organization, and advertisements are disabled on our videos. So the only reason we are asking for this is to spread the truth. It may seem like a small act, but inshallah, it may be a means of guidance for many people. 
Now let's click the subscribe button and let's walk as an eternal passenger. So what should a person who feels discomfort in the face of events should do to remove this? First thing you do, go to him, prostrate to him and say, spell or, or spill your heart to him. So the first thing is in your sujood and why sujood? Because you're the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask you to give me the feeling of being pleased with your decree. Because sometimes the decree is hard on me. I ask you to do this. It doesn't mean you're not going to be tested, but the way you react. Because the more, again, we know all the test comes from Allah. He allowed it. Beg him. Beg him. Cry to him. And wallahi, he will never let you down. There are some people that are not maybe practicing Muslims that maybe feel embarrassed maybe to talk to God. So if you wanted to give a message that could be a source of hope for Muslims, especially women who feel hopeless and sinful, what would you say to those people? Go to Surah Al-Zumar. Oh, my servant. servants, now pay attention. Who's speaking Allah? Oh, my servants, those who have transgressed against themselves. Not the believer, not the uh, uh, practicing, muttaqi, Allah conscious. No, no, no. You have transgressed. What does that mean? You think of it, it's there. And Allah says, don't you ever despair from the mercy, loving mercy of Allah. Why? He forgive all the sins. Never say, you don't know what I've done. Never. Because you're not talking to me. Maybe I will say, I can never forgive you. You don't know what you did to me. This is a human being level. But with Allah, turn to him and says, you know what I did. But I also know that you will forgive me. And he will. Another beautiful verse. I love this one. Surah An-Nisa, the woman. And Allah say this in a rhetorical question. What will Allah get from punishing us? But he wants two things from you. If you are grateful and you are a believer. And Allah, now he used the same name. Allah is all grateful and aware of my mistakes, aware of my sins, aware of my shortcomings. What does he want from me? How do I be grateful to Allah? When I turn to him and I said, I know you will forgive me. And I know you will help me to go through these sins. You know why I'm grateful? Because I know he is able of doing this. Today, women who do not meet the beauty standards set by the media and society can feel ugly. And young girls who do not feel beautiful may face problems such as depression or low self-esteem. So what's the beauty standard according to Islam? And what should be done when we come across a sister who feels bad for this reason? Standards of beauty has changed. Who put this? And who's the creator? The answer is obvious. Allah is the creator. Social media, the biggest influence these days. Biggest. It has a lot of beauty for sure, but also has a lot of impact. And there is a dialogue between Allah and the shaitan. There's many dialogues in the Quran. And Allah says, Allah cursed him, devil, shaitan. And shaitan responded. And then he says, I'm gonna do the following. What are the following? I'm gonna make them, make sure they, us, will go astray. I'm gonna keep them living in hopes, false hopes, and I'm gonna order them. They're going to change the way they look. Subhanallah. Every time I read it, and I was like, Ya Allah. And they will change the creation of Allah. So here you are, my beautiful sister. Number one, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. You know why? Because the one who created you is Al Jameel. Number two, you really want to follow the shaitan. That's a question you ask yourself. Do you really want to do that? Who are you trying to please? That's very important in our life. What is the goal? We are living here for what? To please people, to please ourselves, or to please Allah? What would you say to a hijabi Muslim who wants to take off her hijab? You know when you love someone and you really want to please them, and then suddenly you find that they changed. And you keep saying, what did I do? 
And I say this to Allah. This is why I keep probably I've seen in this interview a lot of the emphasis about a personal relationship with Allah because no one will keep you strong. People may be, but the main thing is you because we get weak. So when you are, and first thing I say, why you want to take it off? We have to be realistic. Answers you will hear. I'm scared. I don't feel comfortable. It's choking me. I think everybody is looking at me. I think, again, I am not beautiful. People telling me if she is not married yet, I will not get married. I will not get a job. I'm worried they will not promote me. And all these, I wouldn't say it's false. Sometimes it's true. So I say, number one, let's talk about it. What is making you weaker? And then you have to look at each one of you. It is me. The last verse in Surah al ankabu Allah said, those who struggle for our sake. Keeping the hijab is a struggle. Not taking the hijab is a struggle. Keeping going to the mosque, to fajr, waking up for fajr, all the other things, not looking at haram, not following this person, that person, it's a struggle. So as a great example in, in front of our eyes, how do you think women should balance their work life, family life, and their religious life? Women yeah. more because of the addition of the motherhood or being a daughter, or what's the society expect from you or think you can and you cannot do? And I get this question so many times from people. Number one, intention, which is the foundation of this religion. Everything you do has to be for Allah, including cooking, changing diaper, cleaning the house. Because then that becomes a form of ibadah. Yes, so yeah. you don't feel, I didn't read my Quran today because I didn't have time. I am not a good Muslim. No. Because what Allah puts you to do, it's pleasing to Allah. That's where he wants you to worship him. Do the things in the right way, in the right time. Don't drag the time, number two. Number three, know your priorities. If you are a mother, the priority is children. Not you're going to go and leave everything and study Islamic studies. Then when your children, let's say, go to school and you are not working, then you have this time, use this time wisely for Allah's pleasure. Intention, efficiency, priority, and most important, one and last is a dua. Although we know that Islam values women, the media tries to create an image, a negative perception to the contrary. So what is the reason for this? How can we explain that Islam really values women? The best way to change the misconception about Islam by you and me, by setting the example. The Muslim woman doesn't know anything. You know what? Don't write anything. Act like. This is what I always tell women. You know what? You go to a grocery shop here, right? And you're coming with your Islamic dress and Islamic head cover. So they assume you are this and this and that. You have two minutes to change the mind of the person who is the cashier here for us because most are non-Muslims or the people in the line or you're in the bank, you're in a public place, that's your opportunity. Act friendly, nicely, smile, speak, courteous. And they will say, wow, is that a Muslim woman? Yeah, that's a Muslim woman. So she is educated. She is a mother by choice. She decided to stay home by choice, not to everyone. So you have to think of what are the misconceptions, right? And I just gave you a couple of them. And then you have to, in your daily action and interaction, change the mind of people because there is a lot of media. That's how it is. Some of the misconceptions needs knowledge. How was our Prophet ﷺ attitude to the women who live with him? His, his wives, his daughters? One of the stories, for example, about Sayyid Aj, I love because there was a love story there. And we really have to enjoy the love story. He loved her like no one else, right? And he was not shy to publicly say it. And this is the best of the creation. He was asked by a man, who is the most beloved person to you? And he said, Aisha. How many men these days in public eye will be asked this question publicly? And he will say, my wife. And he didn't say my wife. He said her name. He acted like a husband, but also 
a, a husband, a leader of a nation, not of a household, but also he gave his wife the space. One of the beautiful stories to Sayyidah Aisha, I, I can't remember which one who came in. He told, again, Sayyidah Aisha, I know when you are happy with me and I know when you're upset with me. And she said, how is that? And he said, because when you are upset with me, you're going to say, by the Rabb of Ibrahim. So you're going to make an oath by the Lord of Ibrahim. And when you're happy with me, you're going to say, wa Rabbi Muhammad, by the Lord of Muhammad. So when you're upset with someone, you don't want to say their name, you, right? Now look at the response, what she said. She said, Wallahi, by Allah, it's only my tongue that will not say your name, but your name is in my heart. What do you think is the reason for us not being able to show companions of our Prophet as role models to our children? Because we are not them. We, all of us, don't act like them. I can't bring Sayyidah Aisha now, I can't, to my child. I can read all the stories. It will make them more interested. But the impact is when I act in the same way she acted, whether Sayyidah Aisha, Sayyidah Khadija, Sayyidah Zainab, when they were faced, when I am faced with the same situation, I act like them. Example, nothing works in teaching more than example. In medicine, when they want to teach me how to do surgery, how is that? They take me to the operating room, right? And they will make me watch, second time help, and third time I'll do it. If you had a chance to observe one day from our Prophet Sallallahu life, which day would you choose? The day of Ta'if, because he struggled way more than what we are struggling. I just can't imagine every time I read about it. What was he feeling, Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, when people belittle him, when people looked at him, when people assumed things about him. And this is what we are struggling with all of us as Muslims, yes. right? What was the feelings inside him? He's a human being. The pain, the struggle. Did he at one moment thought that Allah has not given him the full support? And then how was he feeling when he turned to, Allah, to the mountains and made this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What would you say to your 18 year old self if you had a chance what a lucky human being you are and what blessings he gave you and you better be grateful to him. this is all from allah i would have at 18 again no objection to the decree of allah but i would have memorized quran much earlier because absolutely it protects you much easier journey and i would have struggled more for his sake and I would have less to follow my own desires. Living in the West, how do you see the future of Islam? Are you hopeful for the future of Islam in the world and in West in particular? Never lose hope because it is not in my hand. This is a verse in Surah An-Nur, the light. Allah made a promise. Who's more truthful than Allah? Who's going to fulfill his promise other than Allah? And he said, he made a promise to the believer among you. And he said this to the Sahaba at that time. And those who does good deeds, remember, it's not Iman alone. It has to be good deeds with it. He's going to give them power and they will make them the stewards of this earth. And he will give Islam power and status. The Islam, the deen that he is pleased with. And he, he will replace their fear with peace and serenity and they will be able to worship me without being afraid of anything else i live with this verse the victory is not from me or you or my action or my teaching or my institute or, th or that institute it's from allah if there was a chance to speak to all the non-muslims in the world what would you say to them if you just have one minute give yourself the opportunity to learn about Islam, and you will not practice anything but Islam. No happiness without Islam, categorically. No peace 
internally and externally without Islam and Islam practiced properly. And in the common word, you don't know what you are missing. Jazakallah khairan, Dr. Sheikha Haifa Yunus. Uh, we, we benefited tremendously from this interview. Thank you for your insightful, beautiful answers. So pray for us, inshallah, and hope to inshallah meet you in person. And inshallah, jazakallah khair. I really enjoyed it. Jazakallah khair. We, we too, sister. Yeah.